We're joined in the studio by John Fain, Mornings presenter on 774 ABC Local Radio in Melbourne, who was the interviewer yesterday morning. John Fain, good to see you again. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> if one more person winks at me, I'll kill them. <laughs> Your wink's better than my wink. <laughs> it's irresistible, isn't it? I mean, I don't know. Was it a Benny Hill moment or is this just... What Here's the question well, the look, nation wants to know. Did you wink first? No, no, I raised my eyebrows. It's not every day a talkback caller who says she's a grandmother invalid pensioner says that she supplements her income by working on a phone sex line. And what I did was... Mm. And... You've seen Tony Abbott's reaction. Now, you know, whether it was a sort of private schoolboy snicker at the mere mention of the word sex, or, you know, that sort of thing, or a Benny Hill moment, everyone who, you know, watches it will make up their own mind. But uh, I do think it's got way out of all proportion. Uh, and there were some really important things covered. During a half hour interview, there were some really significant moments, and the wink was, you know, a little bit of what Lindsay Tanner calls the sideshow of politics. It, it was, it was um, a, a very good interview, and, and there were some good moments and some very good talkback questions. Um, but I guess uh, something like this always boils up and, and, and burns over. It takes if on a life of its own. And people who already didn't like Tony exactly. Abbott are saying, here's another reason not that's to right, like Tony that's Abbott. Right. Uh, for me, it was not so much the wink, it was actually the, um, the, 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 the facial movements that followed, yeah. which I think go to your observation about, you know, the, the, the schoolboy response to the idea of yeah. sex, which if, you, if you're not inclined to like Tony Abbott, you'll seize on it and yeah. say, aha, yeah. they, that's the kind of guy you got. And yet, really importantly, uh, he contradicted the budget on university fees. Yep. So I asked him a question about university fees. Uh, if you start a course now, you're going to be finishing it under a regime that imposes fees and you don't even know what they're going to be. How can you enrol in a three or four year course when you don't know what you'll be charged in years three and it four? Was and a, key, a key detail of the budget and a pretty big slip up by yeah. the Prime Minister. Well, was it a slip up or are they changing the policy? Are they rethinking it? Are they reviewing it? We don't mm. know and the university vice chancellors don't know either. The commentary today that's on the front page of The Australian following the winking incident is that it was an example of left hatred towards the Prime Minister simply being played out and hate piled upon hate and, and an overreaction. What's your response to that? Well, the first talkback caller that we took after my 10 minutes of being what's described in the paper as a combative interviewer, where I'm quite flattered by that, as I'd should we this. all be. Yeah, yes. Absolutely. I'll take that one. Thank you very much. But uh, the, the first talkback caller was a woman, Stella from Geelong, who called in saying she was a diet in the wool since she was 18 years old, Liberal voter, and she was furious with the Prime Minister over what she thought was a breach of trust. Let's have a listen to what she had to say. Yes, Otherwise, I don't want him to play games with words. Mm. Just come out and be mm. honest. Well, Stella, um, yes, we have increased uh, fuel indexation by restoring a uh, fuel excise by restoring indexation. I absolutely accept that. And Can you say yes? That's a tax. Wh while we're on the point, while we're on the point, let me let me absolutely fess up to the fact that we have increased the top marginal rate of tax. Uh, by two cents in the dollar for three years. So yes, Stella, we've done that. But the top marginal rate of tax applies to people earning over 180000 and that's uh, about 3% of the total population uh, of taxpayers. We can tell simply by the, the fact that the Prime Minister and, and all the, the, the front benches are out and about in the media so often at the moment that clearly they're having to deal with this strong reaction. What's the sense you're picking up from talkback callers and the like in responding to this budget? How, how bad is that response? Well, they've got a real job on their hands and they know they have to turn it around. It's the old gag about turning around a, you know, an oil tanker or the Titanic, perhaps, if you're looking at a more negative uh, connection there. Mm. But they have to turn it around now before it gets into the sort of territory where you just can't come back. And that was another question that was put to the Prime Minister. Can you come back from these sorts of figures? Because plenty of other leaders on your side and the other side mm. have got to this level in the polls and it's been terminal. He seemed fairly confident he can come back. Well, he's trying to appear confident. Yeah. I'm not quite sure what the alternative would be. It's astonishing that within six months of being elected as Prime Minister, we're even having this conversation. Yep. That's how unpopular this budget is. Well, I, 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 an, a nasty or unkind budget is always going to get that kind of response. Mm. But in your experience and having seen them, them come and go, does this seem to be to you to be just of a type of that kind of response or something else? It's going to require Herculean efforts and great political strategy and tactics. I note the Prime Minister's out and about again this morning mm. and they have put down the accelerator all the way. They've put the pedal to the metal and they are doing everything they can. This next yep. week will be critical. And just finally, um, when the Prime Minister winked at you yesterday, yeah. what did you think? I just 
I, I was somewhat busy. I didn't take much notice of it. I just thought, oh, yeah, you know, he's having a bit of fun. And we've got a whole lot of other things. You know, I've got five screens flashing mm -hmm. at me and talkback callers coming at me and all sorts of other stuff going on. And when I saw that it went viral, I, I thought, well, what about all the other stuff? that? We're yeah, and, and actually Tony Abbott on TV this morning has said that uh, trying to explain the wink that he should have been listening to the caller more closely instead of watching the John Fame raised eyebrow, as it turns well, out. Well, I, oh, so he's blaming you, John. <laughs> he, well, on that, there is actually a, a tiny little bit of significance in the fact that he did seem very nervous, and I don't know why. Okay. He's the Prime Minister, he's been in public life for ages. He's What's... sitting down for an interview with you, John Fame. Yeah, well... That's why. <laughs> now I'm sitting down for an interview with you. <laughs> John, good to see you. Thanks for making time this morning. We know you've got a show put to wear this morning, so thank Apparently, you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks.